Hey, this is Nolzer, and this is the Tier 10 German Battleship Grosserkur First. So, the Tier 10 German Battleship. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, we started out pretty poorly right here. As you can tell, we took a ton of torpedoes. Uh, enemy destroyer was over there. So, yeah. Beyond that, the build is pretty straightforward from a German battleship standpoint. Very traditional. I pick up the Auxiliary Armament Module. It improves the health pull of your secondary and AA platforms, which is helpful, especially if you're trying to go a secondary build. I get the extended range on secondaries. Better rate of fire for my main armament. I am using the 406. It's a full package of rate of fire. The 420 is great too. Honestly, I keep going back and forth between them. It's really personal preference, I think. There's not a clear favorite like the 419 over the 457 for the Conqueror. I get preventative maintenance that couples with auxiliary armament. It sort of protects your main armament from being crit and having to repair that part of it. Expert marksman, drill and rush. I will take damage. That's the plan. Basic firing training, superintendent, manual, secondaries, and advanced firing training. Yeah, I don't have concealment. That's not the idea with the German battleship line for me. The idea is to absolutely brawl the crap out of the enemy and force them to be uncomfortable. Because most players are really, really bad close range. They just don't play like that. And I was having such a terrible experience with the meta after the British battleships came out. Everyone wanted to conserve their energy. Unfortunately for that enemy destroyer, he was the only one in line of sight. So we did do damage to him. And it felt pretty good. I'm not going to apologize for that. This is the guy that did half my health in a torpedo attack right off the start. Some of you are going to be going, well, not, sir. Why are you showing this game? Clearly, it's going to be bad. You clearly started out poorly. Why don't you just leave the game? Or, better yet, get really salty so we can enjoy those tears. I never give up until my health is zero. Or, basically zero. So, I'm going to try my best to hopefully win this game for my team. Now, I chose the flank where it appears that most of the enemy is existing. We can lose the friendly Hindenburg, and yes, this is on 610. No, it does not have a British battleship in the game, but the graphics are absolutely more impressive. The water splashes, the guns firing, the audio, it's all great. And at this point, I knew enemy Amagi is a stopper. He will stop completely if you see someone firing at him. So I need to remind myself whenever I try and fire at the enemy Amagi to lead him less on average because of that. And yeah, look at those splashes. It's great to see that two torpedoes hit him, even though I didn't have a confirmation other than a little green triangle not existing anymore. It's much better and we get 12,000. Yeah, can we get more of that? My team is trying to capture A under the noses, which is very interesting because I believe that the, uh, I think there is a destroyer over here still, right? I can't confirm, but I, I swear that there was a gearing and he's still alive. He could be dead and he probably is dead, honestly, because he was a little too far forward. It's really important as a DD to not throw your ship away so early on. Way too many have been doing this lately and it's like, you're not useful to, to the team. You've got to play the objective, but you can't give up your life to play the objective. Just just move off. The enemy DD will capture the base like he did, and he'll probably leave and do something else, and then you can come back in and capture it. While all that's going on, I'm trying to punish anyone that shows too much side. I gave enough ground that the enemy just doesn't want to pursue. They are ignoring their objective play. Granted, they've lost two destroyers, so it's really hard to play the objective without your destroyers. They only have one left, and he can't be on every flank. I know, that's a shocker. So, 
the battleships and the cruisers have to make up for teammates who went a little overboard with their aggression early on. And the Grosso Kua first is going to punish over-aggressive play by having secondaries that will guarantee a fire on the target, at least. You don't, you don't even need to fire HE. In effect, it is very rare that I ever switch my ammo type. The secondaries just do all the fire chance for you. You don't have to worry about it at all. If you're in range of the target, you will absolutely set them on fire. Guaranteed, you will set them on fire. You just have to stay close for a while, and sure enough, it sets them on fire. They're going to have to put it out if they're aggressive. If they're intelligent, they'll allow the one fire to burn. They'll wait for a second one, and then they'll put it out. Ooh, someone got him with a big citadel. I'm hoping that it'll reach over the island. I am noticing that the island icon is a little delayed. I don't know if that's a product of the changes to the UI. Specifically, they introduced a slightly different detection for smoke and the aircraft. They actually moved the smoke and the cyclone to the left side versus where it was, which was just under the situation area. So I don't know if they introduced something weird, but it feels like... And we're going to burn this guy down. Yeah, he, he tried to fire on us, and he missed. But it, it feels like you've got to double check the island icon to really know that you're firing in a safe zone. So, enemy Amagi burns down, enemy New Orleans is trying to avoid torpedoes, I notice that he's stopping, so I give him less lead on the second half of my salvo. Unfortunately, that German accuracy, 1.8 Sigma rating, you really do need to understand you will miss more than you probably feel comfortable with, but you will make up for it in your rate of fire. I've got the module. I also picked up 406 versus the 420, and I have a drone rush. So my guns will fire very quickly as I continue to take damage. We take out the target as he drops off detection. And we got two battleships, Friedrich der Grossa plus the Iowa. They, they look like they want to just kite us back, honestly. And you don't want to continue the pursuit to a situation where maybe another flank is susceptible or vulnerable to the numbers game. It's just it's just real simple. These guys can't play the objective if they continue to move back. Why would I waste time trying to catch them? I can't. They basically have the exact same speed as the ship. So the better plan, and I eventually catch on to it, is hmm, there are a lot of enemy ships near the center, plus also the eastern flank of the map. Perhaps I could go over there and punish some of those cruisers. But at this point, I'm too preoccupied trying to get some side shots. We're doing maybe 5,000. I mean, it's not as effective as you would like it to be. I noticed that there is a set of torpedoes, so in reaction, I use my hydroacoustic, which is nice. The German battleship line has a very protected citadel. It also has hydroacoustic. Hydroacoustic is great at detecting torpedoes. You will need to do that. You have low torpedo protection compared to other battleships. And that makes it to where I would prefer to pick up Superintendent versus something like Vigilance. Superintendent is going to give me another heal charge, another aircraft charge, and another hydro charge. Yes, if you're not comfortable recognizing the threat, the imminent threat of torpedoes, it's probably better to pick up Vigilance. But for me personally, as I've played the game, as I've inferred situations that are obvious torpedo once you've actually played through an extensive amount of the game you know oh well if i'm in this area the last known position of a dd he could potentially drop clearly i'm detected all the time i don't have concealment these things inform your usage of hydro once you're comfortable using hydro superintendent is the better bang for the buck on a german battleship however Vigilance is probably a better skill for someone who is newer to the game. So, we were able to avoid the torpedoes. Teammates were able to avoid it too, which is great. I am trying to engage. I do enjoy the prospects that are potentially opening up. We do have a Friedrich der Grossa that is going a little too far forward. But there's a couple enemy ships that are within 10 kilometers of my ship. Plus, I'm not detected anymore. So I'm going to try and move forward, finish off these targets. Oh, there's a Shimakaze there. I knew he was close. 
because of the torpedoes, but seeing that he's that close, I could use my secondaries on him. Friendly Missouri, there's really no excuse for this Missouri taking these torpedoes against the Atago. He should absolutely have killed him. I don't know what was the issue. Maybe he's not comfortable going after the waterline, but we're going to try and go and finish the target off. I realized that maybe he was overwhelmed by the prospects of the enemy. At least he moved forward aggressively versus a passive player. I will grant him that. He was able to bait out torpedoes that maybe they could have been used against me. Our secondaries take out the enemy Atago. We've got the Shimakaze, of course, and then we have two cruisers in the background. And I use my aircraft because I don't have Hydra anymore. And I'm trying to layer the aircraft so I have something overhead trying to protect me from torpedoes. I choose to go on the outside of the battleship, hoping that any torpedoes, any stray torpedoes that might be in the water, he would have to consider he can't send with that ship in the way. So he'll he'll pause for a second. Moskva, Ron, both firing on me, both trying to engage me. I want to cover ground so my secondaries are able to engage. I also want to avoid the torpedoes that we know are coming. We use Hydra on the first one. If Hydra's on cooldown and it was usable, successful for the first drop, we know that the next drop will be coming as the Hydra is going to be on cooldown about halfway through because the timer lines up. It's about, what is it? It's a little less than two minutes for the Japanese, I believe. Either way, we detect two. I don't know where his third one is. I expect him to send another one. So I just want to try and be as unpredictable as I possibly could be. But I don't want to get too close to the ship before I kill him. And of course, he wants to get right on top of me. He's got six kilometer range torpedoes. But he's making the mistake of showing too much side in order to use those torpedoes. So my secondary is going to take him out. I knew I was going to kill him. I'm going to back away. I know there's going to be torpedoes. And we're going to engage the enemy cruiser in the background, the Muskva, who is also showing too much side. Oh, wow. We were able to punish. Great. Ah, uh, it feels so good to see my secondaries rain down on the enemy and also know that he's going to have to avoid the island. So when he avoids the island, we can hit him low. His AP is absolutely wrecking us, though. we got to kill him quick. Tons and tons and tons of damage by his AP. But we do take him out. I do regret showing a little bit too much side, but I don't know what else I could do. I wanted to avoid the potential torpedoes that the cruiser could have dropped. I think the Shima dropped his set, and the enemy cruiser was getting in position to drop his, but he, it never came. Hindsight, keep going forward. I would have good angle against the enemy cruiser. It didn't end up working out that way. My teammates did a good job of surviving these two destroyers. It's, it's a huge benefit to have that. And, oh, okay, here comes the torpedoes. Okay, Hydra spots it out. So you can just see the layering that you can do with your aircraft and hydroacoustic. You could also pick up target acquisition. That module will extend your detectability. So you could theoretically have like an eight, seven or eight kilometer ridiculous no torpedo zone with Hydra up and all that stuff. And uh, I mean, it just, it, it's too much. I prefer make yourself just good enough in every single field. So my AA is pretty damn good considering that I'm a German battleship. It's 98 rating. It's not American, but it's good enough that it will wear down the aircraft as they're trying to attack me. My secondaries are great. Manual secondary is fantastic to increase your damage output. I should expect to get anywhere from 20 to 40,000 damage any given game with my secondaries. And that's that's no slouch. That, that's basically a ship in health. That's fires too that will force them to be susceptible to other people who can layer on top of the dots, especially with all the British battleships. There's a lot to like about German battleships. I've enjoyed them since the very beginning. This is my most successful tier 10 battleship. It's like a 75% win rate for me, and I play exclusively solo. So 75 by myself is not too shabby. You know, usually people make excuses for the Germans. I see people who say, oh, well, they're, they're the worst by far. Why are they the worst? Well, you can't play 
your cookie cutter concealment build and their guns are too inaccurate. Well, yeah, they're too inaccurate because you're supposed to be close to the target and use your rate of fire to overwhelm them. If you play to the strengths of the ship, it's devastating, especially when people are uncomfortable playing against that. Let's be honest. Most battleships that get up to tier 10 are very passive with their play. If you're aggressive, someone has to be weaker. Either I'm weak at my passive play and I'll show my side too much, or the enemy will be a little aggressive and show too much side to get his back guns, exactly what that Friedrich der Grosso was doing. He showed too much side in order to use the back guns when he didn't really need to. So I was able to punish him in that moment. Germans don't have the fastest rudder. It's probably the slowest rudder response of any battleship. I'm sure that the Japanese are up there with them, but if you see them widen their stance, it's going to be a long time before they can fix it. And uh, I mean, the eye was showing way too much side. At this point, he's probably given up. I'm trying to maintain good armor profile while getting into secondary gun range. We get a big 20,000 shot. He's trying to fire. Corner up. He's got AP loaded. Probably should use HE when the enemy is presenting a full bow armor. I mean, the, the, yes, the American HE is not British, but you're not going to do any damage when I don't allow you to. And we get another Citadel. We earn a ton of medals. Man, this was a great game to be a part of. I thought for sure... I was dead after those torpedoes by the gearing at the start. But this game just goes to show you, never give up, never surrender. Fantastic game. 215,000 damage, 6 kills, citadels, secondary guns, fires, confederate, high caliber, crack and unleash, dreadnought, secondary kill, 2,398 base XP. Just a fantastic game. Just fantastic. The gearing definitely contributed as well. And yeah, what can I say? The German battleship line is super fun to play. The tier 10 is just as fun as the rest of the line. I have so much success in it. Great tank. Secondary ranges are fantastic. The main battery is inaccurate, but high rate of fire makes up for it. Turret traverse is very awesome. It is the size of a mountain, so torpedoes are a threat, but you have hydroacoustic, which no other battleship does at this tier. Use it well, you'll have great success. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.